This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned to hear more about how building a website can help pay for my legal fees when Apple sees this video. What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Ozox Hardware. How are you guys doing? So the last half decade has been a huge shift for Apple. The one of the few companies to hit a $1 trillion market cap and it shows. Apple products are everywhere now. And culturally speaking, <laughs> Apple is regarded as luxurious. If you use an Android phone instead of an iPhone, or you have 3.5 millimeter earbuds instead of AirPods, you're considered broke. And nobody wants to be considered broke. Of course, this is a gross exaggeration, but it gives you a taste of the mindshare the company has nowadays. The YouTube channel Tech Kaboom demonstrated this when people wanted the older and less powerful iPhone XR, over the beefier and newer Galaxy S10e. Ooh, there you go, okay. I would probably pick that. You pick every guy. Let's have Samsung. You go for the iPhone as well. The iPhone? You pick the iPhone. Okay. It's kind of wild. Now, despite their polarizing business practices, I can't deny they have solid products and they have an even better ecosystem. Now, this is changing, but the truth of the matter is Samsung, Google, and other competitors just don't compare. So the question that you guys might have is, Oz, why don't you use Apple products? Well, I have before in the past, but I wasn't the one paying for them. And see, that's my problem with the ecosystem. It's so expensive to tap into. I've wanted to try MacBooks, iPads, etc., for months now, but I don't want to spend 600 bucks just to experiment. And I get it. Premium products, you pay a premium price, but Apple products depreciate so slowly compared to the other competitors that even their used products are hard to find. This naturally means buying even a used MacBook is out of the question. But one day I was thinking to myself, dude, why don't you just build your own MacBook and try that out? <laughs> and so I did. And that's exactly what I have here a $200 MacBook that you, for obvious reasons, can't buy from Apple themselves. And just know that I'm not doing anything crazy here. It's actually very simple. I bought an inexpensive laptop with specs that I liked and I installed Mac OS on it. That's basically it. If you wanted to click out of the video now, you totally could, but I would like to share my process of picking the laptop, how I got Mac OS on it, and then also my thoughts on Apple and my little experiment conclusion as a whole. I have some interesting findings. Is there anything you want to tell the audience, Zach? Can't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> It took me hours, maybe even days, to choose the correct laptop for this project. I searched through several eBay posts, through Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo, and other local classifieds until I decided on the one that I wanted. You see, Mac OS is a closed software. This means that it's not publicly shared. And so the only way for you to know if the OS will run properly on your laptop is to install it and basically pray that it works. I did a ton of research on macOS compatibility, and fortunately enough, there are decades of trial runs that precede me. So it was a pretty easy job figuring out which laptops were off limits early on. For example, I initially wanted this to be a $100 Chromebook as a base, but after quick Googling, I figured out that the Atom and Celeron processors are generally incompatible with macOS. I had to throw that idea out of the window. After narrowing that down, I made a checklist of the specifications that I wanted in my laptop and my budget of no more than 200 bucks for the following things. At least a dual core CPU with hyper threading and a two gigahertz base clock, at least eight gigs of RAM with 16 gigs of gradability, an SSD, though I'm lenient if it's pre-installed or not, a maximum 14 inch screen size, the smaller the better. I really want portability here. Ideally, a 1920 by 1080 resolution minimum, though I'm not a stickler if it's not, and somewhat slim. I don't want to lug around a fat book from 2010. Specification and performance wise, I'm basically looking at a 2015 MacBook Pro, but of course without the outrageous half grand price tag you find on eBay. And I found one. It's the Dell Latitude E7440.
The E7440 is a wonderful choice. It's sleek, slim enough, has a 14 inch 1080p IPS screen, eight gigs of RAM that's upgradable to 16 and supports two storage devices. I bought mine for only 149 before shipping. Everything is compatible with Mac OS, well, except for the Wi-Fi, but my $20 USB adapter took care of that problem easily. It's probably the best modern choice for a budget Hackintosh. And next came the toughest part, actually installing macOS on the laptop and tweaking it to work properly with all of the devices. Like I mentioned before, most of this is just following directions online, and a lot of users have already successfully installed macOS on my model laptop. I found a GitHub repo with clearly detailed instructions on how to install macOS on a Dell Latitude E7440. Within two hours of following the instructions, I had Mojave installed on the laptop, and within another two hours of editing files and libraries and things of that sort, all of this is detailed in the repo, by the way, I was able to get the laptop 100% functional. Well, more like 98, but close enough. The stock Wi-Fi adapter is unfortunately not compatible with macOS, so I had to buy a $16 adapter from Broadcom on Amazon. I installed that and I'll get into this a little bit later. It didn't work as well as I had thought, but I still had something that would get me by. On top of that, I did some general housekeeping, reapplied thermal paste, and just made sure that the laptop looked good, clean, and presentable. Thankfully, after all of the tweaks and edits, the $200 MacBook Pro was alive and well. Naturally, not everything was working properly out of the box, and there are some missing features that a native MacBook Pro would have over a Hackintosh laptop, but that's far few and in between. For example, some people have reported not being able to use an external display with any of their video outports on their laptop. Fortunately enough, I never had that issue, but it is something that seems to happen commonly enough. Even a Retina display can be emulated on any Hackintosh laptop and higher resolutions can be emulated with the correct hardware, but none of these features per se were anything that I would use regularly, so they didn't matter to me, but it is worth noting in case you wanna try this out. And after doing some very rough and preliminary benchmarks, this Hackintosh sits somewhere between a late 2013 MacBook Pro and an early to mid 2015 MacBook Pro, and it's much, much cheaper. Over the next few weeks, I used my quote-unquote MacBook Pro to get a taste of that ecosystem, but something seemed kind of off. This laptop looks good and all, but there's something missing. There. That's much better. The last time I used a MacBook for more than a couple of hours was more than five years ago, so I don't have much of a reference point here. But I will say, after getting used to a new OS, I enjoyed my experience. Guys, I finally feel like one of those trendy hipster tech YouTubers. Like I have my MacBook, I got my coffee right here. Like I'm set. All I gotta do now is move to LA. In a weird sense, it felt like I infiltrated the Apple cult on behalf of the PC community. And I kinda liked it. On the more technical side, I'm starting to see the appeal of Apple products, specifically their mobile products. It's definitely not the hardware. This Dell laptop sports an i5 4300U, eight gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. That's standard nowadays for even $500 laptops. But the software experience completely changes the game, and I had an overall positive experience with this Dell laptop. And keep in mind, this is without any other Apple products, so I'm not fully immersed in the ecosystem yet. I imagine that if I had an iPad or an iPhone or an Apple Watch to complement the Hackintosh, I would enjoy it a lot more. I did have some software issues simply because 
I'm not using a laptop that's natively supported by macOS. This included Wi-Fi instability and hardware identification issues. The Wi-Fi problem, I couldn't solve for the life of me. The new Wi-Fi adapter that I installed just wouldn't work properly and kept dropping connection, so I succumbed back to my USB adapter. The other issue with the Hackintosh laptop is that sometimes it can't properly identify your hardware without any uh, updated or custom kecks. Now excluding the vertical artifact on the right side of the screen that would disappear honestly after five minutes of booting up, I didn't have any hardware issues with this laptop. Everything was fully functional and for the most part that's independent of Mac OS. 1080p streaming and video playback was perfectly okay and 4K playback was fine as long as I gave the laptop some time to buffer the video. And frankly, I could could even game on the laptop, if you count Roblox and Toontown <laughs> as gaming. Now granted, games on macOS are pretty limited simply because most video games are developed for Windows if they're going to be ported to PC, but if you do want a game, you can do some very, very, very light, like extremely light gaming, and then also maybe some Flash web browser games. Battery life fluctuated anywhere from three to five hours, and considering I didn't replace the laptop, which you should do if you're buying a used laptop, I consider that a win. And for some of the best parts, the keyboard's laptop is wonderful. I know Apple's butterfly laptops that they've switched over to is very polarizing among a lot of people. I haven't personally used it, so I can't attest to anything, but this Dell laptop keyboard is better than my main Acer laptop that I use for school. It's noticeably more tactile, it has deeper presses, it's overall just so much better to type on. And the greatest part of the Dell hardware is the fact that it doesn't thermally throttle. The combination of having an ultra low power CPU and Dell taking the extra time to make sure the casing is thermally acceptable means that I can stay under 90 degrees Celsius even under the most extreme conditions. So after getting up close and personal with the fake MacBook Pro, I gotta say, I'm a fan. For 200 bucks, you basically get older MacBook Pro performance, you get arguably more resilient hardware, a good keyboard, and great battery life. The fact of the matter is, in my opinion, the Hackintosh gives you the best of both worlds. The software grants you a wonderful user experience and gives you exclusives such as FaceTime and iMessage that you can't find anywhere else and also provides uh, developers with tools that are native to Unix-based systems. The hardware, which is the biggest downfall in modern mobile Apple devices in my honest opinion, provides you with awesome upgradability without the crazy upcharge and supports the right to repair. So what do I think of Apple? They can do better, but so can pretty much every large tech company out there. They're showing improvement and their new Mac Pro lineup is a clear example that they're actually listening to their customers. Minus their $1,000 monitor stand, but we won't get into that. They have awesome software, but I think their hardware is lacking in a lot of different areas. Rumor has it though that Apple is developing their own in-house ARM processors for both their iPhones and their MacBooks. So maybe that in-house development will give them a little bit more control on the constraints that they can put on their hardware. Hopefully we'll see an improvement with their next generation or maybe the generation after. Now before I go, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace, like I mentioned at the very beginning. If you want to build a website for anything, and I mean anything, then Squarespace is the right choice for you. It gives you tons of options and templates to choose from to customize your site to your liking. It comes with a custom domain name and 24 seven customer support. So if you ever get confused or need help, they'll be there for you. You also don't need to have any kind of coding or web development experience to start your own website with Squarespace. I'm actually starting the process of moving the Ostox hardware website to Squarespace. And I promise you it'll look delightful once it's all said and done. So if you want a free trial or want to spend less money while building your website, then check the code and the links in the descriptions. Description not descriptions, description, there's only one. But with all of that being said, thank you guys for watching and I have a few questions to ask you guys. What do you guys think of Apple's current state? What do you think of their MacBooks? What do you think of their iPhones? What about the new Mac Pro? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, have you built your own Hackintosh? If you have, 
hit me up in the comments or send me your hackintosh on twitter at oztalkshw please hit me up on twitter i get very lonely online i would like to get more followers and i'd like to see your guys's hackintoshes but until next time i'll see you guys later peace